Good day, Wonder Nurses. I'm Nurse Anne. In our last video, our topic was about syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone. Today, we will tackle the complete opposite of the disease, which is the diabetes insipidus. If you missed the other discussion, you can check the link in the description below. And if you're ready, let's start! Let me first discuss the brief anatomy and physiology that is relevant to our topic. Normally, posterior pituitary gland secretes antidiuretic hormone or vasopressin. It's a hormone made by the hypothalamus in the brain and is stored in the posterior pituitary gland. ADH is responsible for controlling the kidneys to conserve water and it also regulates the amount of water in the blood. In diabetes insipidus, there is insufficient amount of antidiuretic hormone or vasopressin in the body, or there is a resistance to antidiuretic hormone action in the kidney. This will result to passage of large volume of diluted urine, which is more than 3 liters per day. Types and Theology of Diabetes Insipidus First, we have Central Diabetes Insipidus. It is when the body do not produce enough antidiuretic hormone. The most common causes of this type are brain tumor, infections such as meningitis and encephalitis, severe head injury, and any complications that occur after brain or pituitary surgery. Second, nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. This is when there is enough antidiuretic hormone but there is a resistance or the kidneys does not function normally. The defect may be due to genetic disorder or chronic kidney disorder. Next is gestational diabetes insipidus. It is a rare condition and it can only occur during pregnancy. The enzyme produced by the placenta attacks and destroys the antidiuretic hormone of the mother. Lastly is the dipsogenic diabetes insipidus. This is when the patient consumes excessive amount of fluids. It can be caused by the damage to the third circulating mechanism in the hypothalamus. Diagnostic Procedures Water Deprivation Test The patient will be prevented to drink fluids for several hours. While fluids are being withheld, the doctor will measure the changes in urine output, body weight, and urine concentration. Blood test. This is to measure the serum electrolytes. 24-hour urine collection. To determine the volume of the urine for 24 hours. Urine-specific gravity. The result is very low to patient with diabetes insipidus. Plasma antidiuretic hormone level. To determine the amount of antidiuretic hormone in the blood. Key manifestations Polyuria Polydipsia Dehydration Muscle pains and weakness and hypernatremia Treatment Administration of desmopressin which is a synthetic analog of antidiuretic hormone. It is the drug of choice to patient with central diabetes insipidus and it can also be given to patient with pregnant-related diabetes insipidus. For nephrogenic diabetes insipidus treatment, it includes anti-inflammatory drugs, 
and diuretics such as amiloride and hydrochlorothiazide. Nursing Management Monitor the fluid intake and output of the patient. Daily weight monitoring. Monitor for signs of hypovolemic shock such as tachycardia, tachypnea, and hypotension. Replace fluids as indicated. And increase oral fluid intake in response to thirst and reduce sodium intake. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned and understand something. If you want more videos, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.